That's so annoying. Two eight footers. Got it. Okay, next one. I have to move my head. Nope. 14 foot. Another 14 foot. 8 foot. 9 foot. 14 foot. Alright, on my way to Home Depot, I'm gonna cut that baseboard and I got a whole list of stuff I gotta get. So this should be a fun trip. But just the point I want to make with like cutting that baseboard to sizes for each wall. So it's obviously not totally necessary. There's a couple different reasons why I do that. One, I, I like full pieces. I like to not have to like mend two pieces together within one long run. Uh, obviously real long walls, you're gonna have to. Um, and I'll show you, I have one wall where I'm gonna do that, where it's like 16 foot and one inch. And I only sell these in up to 16 foot. So I will have to kind of feather them together. And I'll show you how I do that. But also, I mean, it makes transport so much easier. So instead of having, let's just say like four 16 footers, I can have like a bunch of eight footers, which will fit in my truck bed. Um, some five foot, some four foots. Uh, it makes it a lot easier. So Home Depot only has like the little hand saws, which are, they always suck. I mean, they're always terrible. So I brought this guy with me. <laughs> So I'm gonna see how long it takes before Home Depot's like, no, bro, like you can't be running power saws in here. So let's see how this goes. That was my first trim baseboard trip with the little compound circular saw and nobody said anything. Actually, I ended up cutting some other guys uh, like 16 footer <laughs> for them with it and then, uh, and then the battery died. So I ended up having to hand cut a bunch. But whenever I go there for baseboard, I'm bringing that thing because I blew through like eight pieces right off the bat. It was, that's one of the best ideas. Lauren actually came up with that idea and suggested that I bring it and I'm not leaving home without it anymore. So uh, let's get this, let's get this home. Hope it doesn't fall out the back and uh, let's get to work. We wasted no time moving in a bunch of furniture after the floors were down. So our living room is like kind of set up and then we just got a bunch of other stuff out of storage, which isn't the best workspace, but it needs to be here. So we're just gonna kind of like work around it. One of my other big renovation pet peeves is when Kyle gets so amped up to do like window trim and floor baseboard, but he doesn't give me an opportunity to paint it beforehand. He's like, well, we just, we gotta get it down and then you could just paint it afterwards. But that's so frustrating. If you guys ever painted, you have to cut it and you have to be super careful and like it's just not ideal. So I'm gonna try to spray the trim and baseboard he brought super quick before we could get to it. Cause that's just more efficient, right? What's she saying about me? <laughs> to make my life a little bit easier, we're bringing out the big guns, yeah. Now I don't use this sprayer too often, but I do know that you have to follow the instructions to a T on both the setup and the cleanup. Fortunately, Graco makes some really good videos on YouTube, so I basically just watch them and follow it step by step. because you 
spend like an hour setting it up and then it takes you 20 minutes to paint and then like another hour to clean it up, but so much better than rolling. Would you agree? A 1000 percent. Also because I don't have to roll, she likes to spray. This was my 30th birthday present. Yes, it was. 31 in case you were wondering. And we forgot, we're actually getting some more of our appliances delivered today. So we kind of have to like move a lot of this stuff out of the way. We're just getting our range and microwave because our dishwasher's back ordered. But a range is gonna be pretty nice to have. The appliances are here. Their truck doesn't fit in our driveway. So it was anticlimactic. That was super anticlimactic. <laughs> they delivered it so quick. And now we have a range and a microwave. But we can't hook up the range because we don't have a valve. Yeah. So it looks pretty, we just can't use it. Yeah. Which is fine because the cabinets come on Monday. So I would like this to have some play so that we can put that trash receptacle lower over there. And then we can, well, we start with the corner and then we work out. Right. So I'd like to, this to be a little. Lower. In theory, we could use still use the microwave now. Yeah, no, we can. Just plop it on the counter. Yeah, plug in. So yeah, we can, sure. Get back to these windows. Well, I think your trim is dry. I'm excited. Dude, it looks so bright in here. Oh, yeah, our painter painted the laundry room. And because he loves us so much, he also painted these cabinets, just like a nice, fresh coat. We're replacing these floors with this floor, but. Look how cute. I, I th it's crazy how like that just changed that in my mind. Like I'd put some new pools on here and like be- You'd be happy set. camper. And then I would change this with the cap, with the countertop that we took off of there, that slab. Yeah. The only thing is, is like what's behind like this little wall ditty, you know? So these are dry. Okay, cool. So I'll take, I'll take two of them. I'll take one of them and then I need so these I just laid down. These. One, two. Just be careful because they're like so little tacky. I don't know if I'd be stacking them. They seem to me. Okay. They look great right now. They look great. Oh, I need the sill too. I did that. I'll bring it in too. I'll bring it in. Ow, you just slapped me with that last piece. My bad. You shouldn't have been standing. What's up, guys? It's Sunday morning. Haven't even had coffee yet. But we're coming at you early because Lauren has been hearing the our squirrel friend in the walls. And she thinks she might have found where it's coming in and out. By the time I got downstairs, I couldn't really determine where it was coming from but we're gonna set up a little security camera. We're catching this thing. Where do you think it's coming in and out? You said you said you think you found where it's coming in and out. When we moved in, I saw this thing and I just like, was like, oh, that old owner. Such an interesting way to fix a problem. So there, this is a Chinese food oh. container <laughs> and it used to be full and not been out of, um, but I guess yeah. the squirrel or whatever, or whatever animal it is, bit yeah. through the container and went into the hole. For sure. We didn't even know there was a hole back there. Can you see the hole? What do you mean can I see the hole? Well, from here, yeah. it looks like they did put a piece of sheet metal, but it's just not big enough. I don't know guys, I have not. I have not been brave enough to stick my face that close, but I'll put you in there. <laughs> How funny would it be if you saw it? Wait, I can see in there. Really? Yeah, well, when you stick that in there, I can see. Oh, well, let me do this. He's on like a super wide view. Can you put it in there? Put it in more. Like, put it in there. Just stick it in. 
I just want you to stick it inside the hole. Put your finger in the hole. That's what she said. <laughs> Michael. Michael. It was in the hole. Crazy. Okay. Ugh. All right. Good so we're gonna set this up right here. Is that wide enough? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. And this is gonna be our squirrel cam. Squirrel cam, go. <laughs> Hopefully we catch this thing. First things first, I'm running to Home Depot because I gotta get more trim. Um, I've got a new battery with me this time so that I can reuse this. Let's get going. And while I make this run, Lauren did say she was gonna clean up that area uh, so I can show you guys how to trim out a window. I'm curious what the odds are if that area is gonna be cleaned out or not. So I know we have a lot of cleaning ahead of ourselves, but I feel like I have time to enjoy this a little longer. Just making sure I'm allowed back there with my saw. So I just got off the phone with Lauren and she did not sound like she had that stuff cleaned up. So I probably think that right now, as I'm pulling out of this parking spot, she is scrambling around the living room to clear that space so I can start dressing that window. This I'm gonna need his help with. But Lauren, I will give you the benefit of the doubt. I think that you planned ahead and you're take, you took your time because you were so logistical as you always are and you already have it cleaned up. All right, we just got home. Let me go see if Lauren's got it cleaned. Oh, buddy, it looks like she got it all cleaned up for me. Dude. So we're gonna dress this window right here. And right now all we have is the rough framing and the uh, window frame. So I'll show you guys how to, ooh, I gotta take that top piece off. But I'll show you guys how to dress this. I already dressed this one. And we're going with like a box trim. So I'm not having to 45 miter every corner. Um, I really like how like box trim looks and I'll walk you through exactly how to do it. What do you think, bud? Are you excited? Mommy killed up, killed the cleanup. Are you tired now? You didn't have. Making breakfast. Are you making breakfast? Yeah. What Not are you making? You. Not for me, dude. I was just driving home thinking, oh, maybe I'll stop and pick Lauren up some breakfast. Grab two more eggs. I'm making two more eggs. You really aren't making me breakfast? I thought you were joking. Yeah, grab eggs. You guys see what I'm dealing with here? Dude, I do, but why wouldn't you make them for me? I'm, that's not that I'm not, I'm just not done with the first batch yet. True that, all right, true that. Here we go. Can you open it? Oh, okay. I'll put it right here. Has our friend come out at all? Uh, not that I know of. Back in action with the sprayer. We went through a gallon the other day. Got another gallon on deck. I'm very surprised Kyle's letting me paint the trim before he puts it up because like he's ready to rock right now but everything he just bought I still have to paint. So I'm gonna try to do it pretty quick. Wham! 
<laughs> Wham! <laughs> So if you're gonna be painting like multiple days in a row, you can leave it without cleaning it out. This is the first time trying that, so let's see. If we I did like run water through yeah. the, the whole machine to get like some water in there. Because the worst thing for the painter is that little bit of hard paint to like stop the spray. You know what I'm saying? I need to go get a flat head. Stand by. Stand by. Need to give the paint a little shake. Yeah, of course. Stay out here, buddy. This is how you do it, no? It is how you do it, yeah. Good stuff. Good? Yep. It's like, do a kettlebell swing. I don't know if I remember. Oh, you do. Woo! <laughs> it's just paint. Yeah, look how, look how nice and clean the screen is. Yeah. Just from being in the water. And then I think we should respray back in the bucket yeah. to get the water out. Yeah. All right, I'm just gonna try to do this without the directions. Oh! You have to follow the instructions to a T on both the setup and the cleanup. No directions, go. Probably the worst idea I've ever had. Oh, I need to be plugged in. I need to oh, record. yeah, that would work. All right, hold please. Thank you. Lauren, no directions. This is prime. Okay. Doesn't it have to be in something to prime? I think we got it all out. I'm pretty sure. Okay. So I think I'm just ready to like do this. I think. We'll see. Okay. Isn't that prime? Yeah. Don't you have to pick that up this is the spray which means it should be suctioning it from it there now because it's on prime right now it's off prime it's on spray. don't we have to prime the paint into the lines i don't know well let's see let me just watch the video don't watch the video okay but you're on spray if you want to be in prime you have to be in prime that's what i said i was just there okay all right so stay there but but nothing's coming out let me just read the instructions before we break it. Leave it alone. Stop it! Stop! Oh. It's my toy. <laughs> You're not breaking it. Dude, I love this paint. The color? Or the yeah, spray? the color. Well, both. But the color, it just looks so good. Yeah. Whoa, oh. that's not supposed to happen. Well, do again. Yeah, is it how how off, how long did it do? It just that last little piece? Yeah. Maybe it was because when you were releasing. Oh, nothing. Oh, I'm gonna look down the barrel of a gun. All right, we got it. Absolutely user error. It was all clogged up, but we clean now. Super spray, do it up. We may have to prime it again. Oh yeah, you're, ah, uh, really? Oh, what did that do? There we go. Nope. Yeah, let me prime it again, hold up. Stand by. Maybe come spray it in the bucket. No. What the shit? We cleaned it out again. Let's see if that works. Cross your paws, Bode. Woo! Let me turn you up. But is it gonna last? Yeah, let me turn it up. Got. Why does it seem like it's like... It's like... Not... Oh, jeez. All right, so Lauren had a good idea to just like put in the wall spray tip just to like troubleshoot and see... Stay off of there, bud. And see if it's the tip that's clogged up. So let's see how it works. Take 57.
painting, finally figured out the sprayer, and we had a nice visitor. Everyone, this is John. How we doing on YouTube? Yeah, he brought us some nice beverages, encouraged us to take a break, and now we're putting them to work, because if you come to our house, you're just gonna get put to work. This is forced labor, but I did have a couple beers. Yeah. And now we're gonna play with power tools. Woo! Yay! So we're gonna start trimming this window, and I went to, I showed you the finished product before, but I wanna now show you just kind of a step-by-step, -step because we get asked a lot, like, as a DIY beginner, what sort of things and projects can you take on that aren't like too advanced that could raise your skill set to take on some harder projects later? And I think that like wrapping windows is a great one because it's gonna teach you how to use a miter saw, it's gonna teach you how to pull angles and level things out. It's it's a great starter project. So we're gonna dive right in. And the first thing you're gonna do is cut your sill. Now for you old house renovators out there, your frame is probably gonna be in terrible shape like ours is. So I'm going to be wrapping the inside of this with some finished MDF before I actually put my trim on. So uh, and that's going to actually help me out in two ways. That's essentially going to be my extension jam on this piece because I'm going to need a little bit to bring me out. That'll work as my extension jam and it'll give me a nice finished edge on the inside. So we're going to take measurement to figure out how long we need to cut our sill. So um, this is three quarter inch and what I'll do is put it on the inside because we know that we're going to be working with that and I'll pull a measurement out and let's get a little bit closer to the bottom but I'll pull a measurement out and I know that my trim is three and a half inches wide so I'll pull from the inside of that and mark three and a half all right once I mark three and a half it puts me about there you want a little bit of an overhang with your sill outside of your trim so I usually do like between three quarters inch to, to an inch, somewhere right near, I like three quarter. But uh, then you're gonna mark your wall. And you're gonna do the same thing on this side. And then just take your measurement mark to mark and cut your sill to length. Is that easy? That easy. Bang. So now we got our sill cut to length, all right? Now we're gonna determine how much do we have to notch out to be able to add our overhang. So essentially all you're doing is, I use my tiny little speed square here. And I'm gonna up against the window and then lock it in. From the inside, that's gonna be touching your window, mark that. Do the same thing from your mark to the inside of this window, which I did, and that is my distance there. Do that for both sides, and this will be able to snap right in. So let me go, I already cut this side, let me go cut this side out, and then we'll set it in place. Don't be nervous about making these cuts because because I'm a nice guy and I know that that you're probably gonna screw up and I've screwed up so many times, I'll show you like a foolproof way to caulk that is gonna hide any imperfections and it's just gonna look beautiful. Like this little line right here up against your window, you're not gonna get that like exactly flush up against there. So you're gonna have to fill that. Um, so I'll show you like, you, you'll be able to fill that once you paint it, it you're not even gonna be able to tell. But this is the first thing to do, okay? Because what you got, everything's gonna be built off of this. Once you put these insides in, if this is not level, and you're gonna notice that it's not level if, if it isn't. So you need to figure out what level is for this. So now that's not it. Just, just prying that up is not good enough. You know, you, you, wanna, you wanna actually throw a shim in there because what's gonna happen is you're gonna put your trim on and it's, it's, even if this is, like let's say I stick this in and I nail this in. Even if I do that and I put this trim on over here, it still has the potential to push it down and then back out a level. So you're gonna to wanna to shim that and then cut it and then your apron underneath will cover anything else. But that's where we're sitting at. This looks really good. All right, so we got Lauren outside. She's cleaning the sprayer. So we got John, my boy John behind the camera right now. So we've got the sill in place, it's level from front to back. Don't forget about front and back. Like it's easy to forget about that. Left to right is nice and level, but then you got a sill facing up like this. So you wanna make sure front to back you're level as well. So we're nice and level on that. Now we're gonna to begin to finish off these inside uh, of the window frame. So you're gonna go back to your little speed square here. All right, and you're gonna pull your management from the bottom. Mark it on your, uh, I'm using MDF. Uh, I'll mark it on the bottom and then take it to the top. You do the same thing and then pull your height. All right, so I pull the height first. I cut the piece to, this, to the height that I need 
and then I will take my bottom measurement market, top measurement market, connect the lines, rip it through your table saw. So that's where we're at, that's what I just did, and then we're gonna snap this up. And like I said, this frame is a little inset, so I would normally have to do an extension jam here. But this is gonna work as my extension jam, essentially. Instead of going faced onto here, we're gonna put it on the inside, it's gonna bring us out to that sheetrock height. So that's where we're looking right now. So once I snap this in, when I put my trim up, boom, it's gonna go right over top. And uh, we'll get into doing the rest, but you're gonna do the same thing on all three sides, the, this left side, and then you'll do the top. So I'll get back with you once I get those two sides done. All right, cool, very good. So we got the inside all wrapped. All right, so now we gotta start with the outside. So I like to set my top one in first and then my two sides. So um, what I will do is go around and for all the trim, you're gonna have a reveal on this side. So the point in which where your trim starts is what I'm talking about. So this piece is the reveal. So what I like to do is an eighth inch reveal. So I will set again the little square to an eighth of an inch. All right, and then I'll go around and I'll mark one in the middle, one on the bottom, one on the top on each side, the right side, the left side, and the top. Basically, it's a couple different reasons why I'll do that. Um, one, so I can get a nice measurement for my top piece, because now I know that I've got three, a uh, three and a half inch piece of trim. I'm gonna set it on the eighth inch mark that I just made, and basically just mark the outside of it. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Put it on my line I just made, mark the outside. Now when I pull my measurement from there to there, that's the length of my top piece. All right, so I'm gonna cut that one out, uh, and then we'll get the right and left sides done. All right, so we got the top set, and we're gonna start on the right and left. And instead of measuring, because who likes to do that, just take your right side, kind of set it off to the right, and then mark right there. And that's gonna be the length of this right side. Do the same thing with the left, and you're good to go. So just throwing a little tip in there. Um, this one, if you come over and look, if I was to drive this in, this, this uh, frame is just the hair little bit, bit taller than this wall. So this side of the trim kind of sits in a little bit. What you can do is wedge out the inside to the height that you need. And when you nail this in, you'll be able to pull that out and it'll stay right where you've nailed it. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So we've got all the pieces in, left, right, top. Sill, the last piece is the apron, so the bottom. Now you want your apron to be the same width as your left and right side. So what I'll do is just put it onto the sill Mark your, the outside of your right, the outside of your left, and then when you put it up underneath, just make it tight, and nail that, that's it. You're good to go. Filling nail holes. I've gone through a wide variety of options throughout the years, but the best thing that I have found has been dry decks. It's spackling, it's pink and it turns white when it's dry. When you fill this, you don't wanna do like a that and just leave it like that. You wanna be as minimal as possible. So if you can pull this smooth and then I'll actually use my finger, smooth out the stuff around it and then kind of hit the hole like that. Then what I do after it's dry is I've got this 220 sanding block and I'm just gonna hit it real nice and light with the sanding block. And I did it over here. Right here, you can kind of see it, but it's not dimpled in, because this will not shrink. Unlike caulk, where like you put caulk in there, you can put it in as many times as you want, but it's always gonna shrink and you're gonna have this little dimple. This does not shrink, so you don't have that problem. So uh, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna fill every hole, and then, uh, and then I'll show you the caulk, because I'm gonna fill all of these gaps with caulk, and I'll show you, it's, it's gonna, it comes out perfect. I asked her to cut half of blade's length and you should hear the noise and antics that are happening outside right now.
Oh my god. Are you good? Alright, that looked like a good cut. This is a perfect cut. What was going on out there? Well, because I didn't have like a thing to hold the end weight. Yeah. And so I propped up like a little block, but then obviously every time you move it down, the block falls over. You got something to hold that weight. Your hand. Yeah, but like... You just press down on it. But it's, it's, it's a lot for these little forearms, oh, you know what I mean? Oh, boy. We finished that one. We finished that one. Kyle's working on this one. Is there... Was that like the most perfectest cut you've ever seen? Yeah, that's good. It's a good one. Real good cut. Well done. I want like a little bit more than that. Yeah, your words of affirmation. I am. It's a, it's a fantastic, it's like the best cut I've ever seen in my life. Because if you ever want me to cut ever again, you gotta tell me how good I am at yeah, it. Is, it was very good. Stop staring. I got an idea. Obviously, I still gotta like, you know, fill all the cracks and the seams, but just that little separation, that little bit of extra trim in between, it definitely gives it a better look. The other way, it was looking a little like exterior of a house for me. I just think it looked unfinished. It looked, yeah. Like, it looks like I'm actually looking at the exterior of the house and this is the outside of the window, except I'm standing in my living room. Like, I like the box style trim like that, like the squareness, but yeah, it needed a little dressing which I think that gives it. So, I'm gonna do it the rest of the month. So the only thing that sucks is I, I did caulk this one already, so I'm gonna have to like, do a little surgery on it, but we'll get it. We'll Un it. Uncock it. Yeah. I'm happy with how that looks, so it looks better. Looks great, baby. Yeah. Good job. Oh, wow. Okay. Another weekend down. <laughs> So I got that one window completely done. I just have to caulk it in, but I've got the two other ones that I need to update and add that decorative trim to, but um, not a whole bunch done this weekend. It's okay. But progress is progress. Progress is progress. Haven't found the squirrel. We think we found where he's getting in. It, getting in. We do have a pest control company coming. Yeah. We'll let you know how that goes. And tomorrow we are getting our kitchen cabinets. They're getting delivered tomorrow. Very I excited. am jacked up about that. But we're calling it a night. See you guys tomorrow. Oh man, our kitchen cabinets are here. They were supposed to come last night, but they got a little delayed, but they are here and that's all that matters. So hopefully they'll load them all in. When we first ordered these cabinets, the company said they probably will just deliver to the driveway or like deliver to the property and they won't bring them in. But when you're nice, They'll bring them in. They did have some trouble getting the Lazy Susan in, so right now it's just sitting on the front porch with the tarp over it. So we're either gonna have to like take the door off, try to get it in, or take the cabinet itself apart and bring it in, but I'll, I'll take it. Normally we get Ikea cabinets and I have to build them all, so taking one partially apart, not that big a deal. Now that we got the cabinets, we could finally start putting this kitchen together, but that's gonna happen for us tonight but you're gonna have to wait till next week to see it. So Kyle's at work, I'm gonna close this one out without him. Hope you guys are enjoying these videos. Like, subscribe if you wanna follow us along on this journey, and comment below your favorite parts, and we will see you guys next weekend.